in the uh, Kafis hymn to the sweetest Lord Jesus that we often sing as we did this morning before the Divine Liturgy, there is uh, one of the verses that talks about the Gospel that we just read. It says that Peter was being assailed by an inward storm of wavering thoughts, and thus he began to sink beneath the waters. But seeing Christ as the true God, he reached out and received the hand of salvation, crying, Alleluia, or I'm paraphrasing it as best as I can remember. And I love that the hymn takes this gospel and internalizes it in the person of Peter, that the storm that he was really dealing with, that the trouble that he really had in the situation was an interior problem, not an exterior problem of the waves, but an interior struggle with wavering thoughts. Because really this is, for the most part, the struggle that all of us have in life. The fundamental human condition is a struggle with our own thoughts. We are our own worst enemies. And when we become the victims of our own thoughts, basically, and we, we get tyrannized by the passions of our own thoughts, as it also says in that wonderful Akathis Tim, uh, we become, unfortunately, a tyranny to others very often. We become dysfunctional in all of our relationships. And so the evils of society begin with the interior problem of the human condition. And so, from the very beginnings of Christianity, the fathers looked at the spiritual life and said, this is where you need to find your center. This is where you need to find your peace. You need to find your faith in Jesus Christ and change yourself from the inside out. Today, we have, as I've said so many times before, right, we live in the safest, most profitable, prosperous, healthy, advanced technologically society in the history of humanity, but we're some of the most miserable people who've ever lived. Where is that misery coming from? It's from what's happening on the inside. It's what's happening in our thoughts, in our torment that we put ourselves through. As we just can't let go of things, as we just fixate on things, as we become anxious, depressed, you name it. Father Roman Braga, blessed memory, he said, we don't even know ourselves. So we are, we are a, a pastiche, basically. We are, we are a collection of quotes from books, he said. <laughs> that, was, that was the sign of his erudite generation, that he would say we're quotes from books. If it's my generation, it's, uh, I'm a pastiche of uh, memes, TV theme songs, and useless sports trivia, or something like that, right? That's the stuff that's banging around in the head. And I know this to be true because when, when, uh, when we would go camping um, in high school, and we sit around the fire, and we didn't know what to say or do, we'd think of songs we could sing, and the only songs we knew were TV theme songs. So, and you all know too, right? You can call them right to mom. But, um, yeah, we, we have so much junk banging around in our heads, and we don't have any clarity. We have these wavering thoughts. It's not a surprise. Not wavering, because I can't remember what was my next point. What's my next point? Um, we need to find stillness if we're going to know who we truly are. Father Roman would say, if only people would just start to take five minutes a day and sit in silence. Of course, Father Roman spent years in a communist prison, much of which was in solitary confinement, and he came out of that experience saying it was the best thing that ever happened to him. And most people thought he was crazy. You know? But he said, you have either two choices when you're in, in solitary confinement. You either go inside yourself and you find God, or you go crazy. You, that's your own choice. And so he was thankful for the experience that he grew closer to God because he had stillness. He didn't have any books to fall back on. He didn't have any TV to watch. He didn't have his phone with the internet. Imagine, you know, it was bad enough before the internet. 
but how bad it is, it is now, right? Because you have at the palm of your hand all the garbage information, junk food data, and entertainment and distraction of the entire human collection, right? You want it, you got it. Everything is there, from the, the best to the worst, but it's all there. We have, we, psychologists even have a phrase today to describe the problems that we have as a species. They call them distracted disorders. Distracted disorders. We are so, we are so unable to sit in stillness with ourselves, in quiet, and know that still small voice of God that comes it can be encountered only within that we are suffering because we can't get enough distraction. We spend all of our time flipping and swiping and pointing and dopping and whatever. You know. Talk about useless trivia. What am I? What, all of you know that the best, the greatest kung fu movie of all time was Gordon Liu's classic Shaolin Master Killer, also known as 36 Room Shaolin, right? Y'all know. <laughs> the beginning of this movie has this uh, young man whose who's village is uh, uh, being, being attacked by the forces that be, the, 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 I'm not sure who it was, the mandarins or something like that, and, and he escapes barely with his life after his, after his uh, master's teacher is killed and everything. And so he runs off and seeks refuge in Shaolin Monastery. And in Shaolin, he says, please just let me learn how to, let me learn Kung Fu so that I can go and I can help my people fight off these invaders. And he quickly learns uh, to be humble because it's impossible to do most of the things that they expect him to do. And the first thing that he learns is after a long, hard day of work, to go into the, I guess what you would call the refectory, the, the dining hall, all the novice monks with their their shaved pates have to run across a path and when they get to a certain path there's a section of the path that is no longer stone but is in fact a pool of water and in the pool of water there are about three or four logs floating in the water and each one of these novices runs right across runs right across the wood without sinking oh call back to the gospel right runs right across the waters and gets to the other side and gets to eat their food. And actually, I think they have to hold, they have their food already. So they have to carry a plate of rice, a bowl of wet rice, and do this without spilling. Right? So of course he's like, okay, no problem. And he tries, of course, completely botches on the first and sinks into the waters and falls underneath and loses his food for the day. And uh, day after, he starts to starve, right? Because he's, he's not able to get to the refectory to eat. And they're not going to let him eat outside of there. And so he finally says, enough is enough. I'm going to practice it. He puts the bowl down and he spends the night trying to do it. Nothing he does matters. And finally, in his frustration, he takes the, the, the empty now bowl that he had that once had all of his rice and he just like throws it in frustration. And as he watches it, he watches how it spins like a skipping stone across the water and bounces gently off the surface of the waves. And he realizes that he needs to stop thinking the way he's been thinking about this, about thinking about it in terms of the water and thinking about moving forward, not stepping down. The wavering thoughts that we have are those things which keep us pointing downward when we need to be pointing forward and running towards the goal of our destination, which is Jesus Christ, reaching out for the hand of salvation. Peter said, Lord, if it's your will, tell me and I will come to you. And he was doing fine while he was going to Jesus. But as soon as he started looking down at the water and the waves and fixating on that, he began to sink. So just like uh, Gordon Luke, he had to learn that hard lesson and humble himself. And so once Gordon Liu understood that he had to skip and focus on the direction forward instead of focusing on the weight going down, he was able to do it with the rest of them. And he finally got fed and went on to succeed at all of the other rooms of Shaolin Temple and became a master of Kung Fu. It's a great movie. If you've never seen it, go see it. You can download it on Netflix or something. It's worth, it's worth watching, too. I'm not kidding. Um, 
It's a wonderful spiritual lesson in that movie. Uh, brothers and sisters, you know, you've heard me the last couple weeks talk about how important it is for us to be kind to one another, to be gentle towards one another, to create a culture of kindness. That requires, that you don't do that by good intentions. We would love to be good people if we just could, if it didn't require really much effort, right? It's, it's easy to be good to those who are good to us. It's easy to be good to go, uh, good to those that we like, that we agree with, that we relate to. It's hard to be kind. It's hard to be empathetic to people that we don't trust, we don't necessarily even like, that we don't, that we fear. Okay. How do we do that, though, going forward? As Christians, the challenge is to realize that those things, those fears, anxieties, resentments, distrusts, whatever you want to call them, whatever form they take, those are the wavering thoughts that we have to deal with. Those are those waves that will suck us under if we let them. If we want to move forward as a people, as a society, we have to continually be moving forward towards Christ, seeing the beauty and the good in every single person that was made by God. And run across those waves. Don't let them sink us, suck us up. Fight our own passions, but do it by moving straight towards the Lord. Saying, Lord, I know there's all this stuff around me. I know there's all this stuff inside me. But I know that you are there. And as long as I move towards you, I will continue to do the right thing towards fellow human beings. So brothers and sisters, let's Let's spin across the waves. Let's, let's run across the waves and reach out for the hand of salvation, crying to the Lord. Hallelujah. Christ is among us. Amen.